Well, what's up, y'all? I'm Dusty. This is Fox Holler Homestead, and you're watching Tower Crane Tuesday, which is something I do every Tuesday. It's a little bit of crane education, a little bit of change from the homesteading situation. But I have been recently asked a very cool question. How do you become a crane operator? Well, that's a multifaceted question. I mean, as far as the answers go. Now, I'm just gonna give you a couple. You can take it from there and uh, see how that works for you. Now, if it was me, I think your first option is going to be whether you want to be a non-union crane operator or you wanna be a union crane operator. Now, there's benefits to both. Um, I am a union crane operator, um, but I am not opposed to non-union. I mean, you do your thing. It's it's not going to work for everyone. Same thing with the, the union or not, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, try and figure that out first for yourself. Now, in consideration to beginning this journey, one of the very, very, very important things that you're going to have to attain at some point in time if you don't already have this, is a commercial driver's license. The reason why you're gonna have a commercial driver's, license, commercial driver's license, this will help you get into the crane industry first before you get your certifications. Now, when I say this, I'm specifically talking about driving heavy haul, uh, driving truck uh, with flatbed, typically um, any kind of CDL, anything with your air brakes, uh, you typically wanna start off with a class A CDL. Don't go with a class B, it severely limits on what you can drive. Now, you can go to a crane company for that, from that point forward, you can have your CDL and you can start driving for them. Now, when you're driving again, what you're gonna be doing is um, you're gonna be driving uh, loads of, you know, maybe counterweight um, loads, tower crane loads, uh, crane jib parts, um, luffer parts. I mean, the list goes on rigging, um, you, it could be, you could start off as an apprentice and uh, be driving the support load for a specific crane. And um, that's something that you would probably start at the very beginning. Now, you would eventually, if you, once you attain, which I'll go into, you attain your crane certifications, then you'll move into uh, an oiler position. Now, an oiler is the one that typically drives the crane, mobs the crane from your yard to the job site and the operator will follow behind in the company truck and uh, uh, you are going to be responsible for like I said driving but also uh, greasing oiling the machine making sure it's clean everything is running well um, assisting the operator with anything and everything that they need outside of operating the crane now this will uh, eventually spin over time and you may, may uh, be able to get some seat time, maybe uh, suck in the boom, um, hoist down or, you know, uh, help sh bring the crane in. You'll learn how to throw out riggers. The list goes on with that. <clears throat> now, these are all very, very, very important things and concerns to the crane industry. The reason why is because there's a lot of individuals that think that what they can do is they can just sign up for crane classes. Now, granted, there are um, private companies out there that will run you through a crane course and uh, you can get your crane large and small hydraulic, um, swing cap, fixed cap, however they term word it now. Um, and from that point, move on to other certifications. The problem is, is that once you go out into the industry, just because you have your crane licenses does not mean, it does not mean that you necessarily deserve to sit in that seat. Now, it's not saying that you couldn't, but the proper, most respectful way and concerns to the crane industry is that you start off at the bottom and you work your way all the way up. That way you have a complete and, and fully understanding, complete and full understanding of what it is that the industry entails, because it's not all about sitting in this seat. It really isn't and throwing switches and uh, a lot of guys become entitled when they do that. So they haven't earned their right to be sitting in this seat. Now, in concerns to your crane licenses or your certifications, um, actually, let me stop that real quick. One of the things, one more thing that you would like to attain 
um, with your CDL, if you don't have one, is your rigor and signal card. Now, those are very important as well because once you're working in the industry, before you go and move into a seat, you're going to be want you're going to be on the ground. You're going to be running around the crane, learning everything about the crane, learning all about the um, all about the uh, trucks, learning about rigging, learning about signaling, how to give signals, which I did in my last uh, tower crane video. Um, learning how to give verbal signals, learning how to give hand signals. Um, and the list goes on and it's a it's a very extensive um, learning process but it's also amazingly important to your process to becoming a crane operator now let's go into certification once you have completed these parts which will take sometimes a couple years but it really depends on how bad you want to be a crane operator um, once you have completed these parts and you've slowly worked your way in, then you'll maybe start getting some seat time. You'll talk about it, talk to an operator. He'll let you do this. He'll let you spin the crane around. Um, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Depend you'll start to figure out what kind of cranes you want to work with. Then um, you can go into your uh, getting your certification. So um, there's a multitude of different ki uh, kinds of certi certifications that are acceptable, um, specifically in the United States, is NCCCO, N, three C's, and an O. The re what that stands for is it's National Commission for the Certification of Crane Operators. Um, this is also the same place that you're gonna go to get your rigor and signal card. Now, first off, when you take this certification, or you take these tests, there's a couple different things that you need to do. Number one is start off with your small and large, I don't know if, they, if they've reworded that, small and large hydraulic or swing cab, fixed cab. Swing cab is going to be on a mobile crane um, where the boom and the cab itself are fixed and when you swing to one direction, the cab swings with the boom. Now, a fixed cab is going to be something like a boom truck where you have the boom that's on the back of the truck and you stand on the side of it, it's totally out in the elements, but you stand in one, uh, one spot and all of your levers are right in front of you. And when you swing uh, the boom, the you stay fixed, the boom swings around over top of you and around. That's number one. Then there's a core test. Um, so you'll, you'll pick out, you know, specific what kind of crane it is, uh, like the Manatech, or uh, you know, Tarek, Terex, or you know, whatever it is. Uh, and then there's the core test. The core test is, that's the one time that you're gonna have to take the core test at the very beginning. And the core test is very, very extensive. Um, what this is gonna cover is ASME rules, OSHA uh, policies, um, administrative code. Um, I mean, the, oh, it's so, it's, it almost feels very redundant, but at the same time, the reason why we have OSHA and ASME is because there's been so many cowboys in the past and they want every word in OSHA is written, literally written in blood. So it's an amazing thing to, uh, to be able to learn and understand, but it is difficult. Um, so once you do your core test, you do your small and large hydraulic, um, from that point, we'll just, hold on on that for right now. Um, just because you've passed those doesn't mean that you get your licenses. So your next step along this path um, for getting your mobile crane is going to be your practical exam. Now you're gonna have to find a school um, that you're gonna pay for. If you're in the union, that's the better part is that once you become a member, you'll be able to go to their training and that is free you'll have to pay for the test, but it's very cheap. You get compensated if you pass them. Um, but you do a practical exam. The practical exam is going to consist of um, sitting on the crane, learning the crane, a swing cab or a fix, or actually swing cab and fixed cab. So both your boom truck and your mobile. Um, and it's running the crane through a course with a designated weight. Um, you'll have to shoot the boom out to a certain length um, there's a zigzag course, there's a 90 degree or 180 degree uh, course and 
those are the things that you're going to have to pass. There's tennis balls on all the cones. You can't knock them off. And it's, I mean, it's very fun, um, but it's challenging, especially if you've never sat in a cab before. Um, but it's not like you sit in a cab one time and they expect you to do it. These are things that, again, happen over time. Now, once you do your core, your swing and fixed, uh, fixed cab, um, and you pass that, you pass your practical, from that point, you can move on to other cranes as well. You can move into it uh, to um, testing out on your tower crane, uh, luffer tower, um, your crawler, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but you gotta do the cores first, and you have to do small and, and uh, large hydro, small and large hydraulic fixed swing cap. Um, as far as a tower test goes, um, it's fairly easy compared to the swing and fix. There's a lot more going on with a mobile crane than there is a tower crane. Now there's a whole new aspect that you'll have to learn about, but again, it's a little bit, it's a little bit easier, I think. Um, it's just my opinion. Um, a mobile crane, there's a lot of stuff that you need to figure out because uh, it's not fixed like a tower. You're gonna have to move throughout different areas, geographical, um, and you're gonna have to worry about ground conditions. You're gonna have to worry about setting up. Setting up is a huge part of it. Um, but that's basically how it, you get your certifications, how you slowly become a crane operator. Now, to be a tower crane operator, yes, you could go to school. You could pay the schooling, which is probably not cheap. You could join the union and do it through them or the apprenticeship program. Um, but as far as sitting or getting a seat in a tower crane, uh, typically what's gonna be required, even though you have your license, you're gonna have to get your signal rigor and, car, or rigor and signal card. And it is recommended and it really depends on what hall you're working out of or what company you're working out of. But to, to get a seat in a tower crane, you're gonna have to spend, I'm gonna assume the minimum of a thousand to two thousand hours underneath the hook. Now, what I mean by that is that underneath the hook is belling, it's uh, or signaling, um, and rigging for a tower crane. Now, this is where, ironically, this is where you're going to gain your most uh, practical and valuable knowledge is underneath that hook, because if you don't experience that first then you'll never know what it's like for once you sit up in the seat, what the guys are going through on the ground. So that's huge. And a lot of times uh, people are very, very antsy. They're very, uh, they think that, you know, oh, I got my crane shirt, I should be able to get more seat time. No, that's not how it works. You need to earn your way up. Um, same goes with any crane. You earn your way into that seat. Therefore, you respect that seat a heck of a lot more than if you were just given that. And that pretty much goes with anything in life. Anything that is just given, you don't respect and you won't respect nearly as much as if you had to work for that. So in this industry, it is. You got a bunch of hard asses um, and they will flip you crap all the time. But uh, the best individuals to listen to are the guys that have been sitting in that seat for a long time, those old salty, uh, those salty old timers that have been sitting up there that they seem like they're just man, they got a stick shoved up somewhere that where the sun don't shine. Those are the guys that you get in good with. You know why? Because they're packed, packed full of knowledge. Those are the ones that are going to help you the most. And honestly, if you can't handle, if you can't handle the, the cussing and, uh, you know, the getting bitched out, excuse my language, um, and getting yelled at for certain things if you mess up and, and uh, you can't handle that hard attitude, this is not the industry for you. It really isn't. This is not for sensitive, emotional people. Um, we're a bunch of hard asses, but the reason why is because what we do for a living is very, very serious and people's lives are literally on the line. My number one responsibility every day is to come in and do my job as safely and efficiently as possible so that I don't kill anybody, literally kill anybody or myself. If we all want everybody to go home to their families at the end of the day. And um, that's pretty much how that works. I really hope that you guys like this. 
uh, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button. It really, really helps our channel out a lot. And, uh, and again, I'm Dusty. I got nothing but love, nothing but blessings for all y'all out there. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in the comment section and I will get back to you. Maybe I'll even uh, uh, respond to you on one of the short videos. And um, until next time, again, I got nothing but love, nothing but blessings for each and every one of you and all your families. And until then, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.